Hey everybody and welcome to the Jersey Comic Group. We bring you the news and reviews on your favorite comics, movies, and TV shows. As always, I'm Rob Moran and with me is... Chris Heller. And on this week's episode, on today's episode, it's a unique one. We're doing an interview with the comic book stores that we love. Yes, today we have a special interview with Mike from Manifex Comics. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk with him about DC uh, leaving Diamond Distribution, how he created his store how he dealt with the changes that was brought to COVID, all of that and more. So stay tuned because you're going to have a great episode. All right. Hey, everybody. We have a very, very special guest today. It's um, not this me. Is, I'm sorry. It's not Rob this time <laughs> who's on every week. Uh, it's Mike Chen. Uh, he is our neighborhood comic store owner. Um, he runs Manifest Comics. You can check him out on manifestcomics.com yep. or on Facebook. Um, at Manifest Comics. Uh, he is our local comic store owner here in Bayonne, New Jersey. Uh, the comic store I go to, uh, Rob used to go to when he yes. was a little bit closer in college. Um, known Mike for probably four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest parts of this community. Um, one of the best guys, too, around. Uh, he's become a friend. We've been in you know fantasy baseball leagues together where he's just absolutely destroyed me. <laughs> uh, so, awesome. uh, you know, if you're never in forget. the... Never forget. Yeah, never forget. And uh, so if you're in the area, Manifest is definitely the place to go for all of your comics, graphic novels, uh, pops, everything, wall books. It's a phenomenal place. Uh, I'd, I'd never go anywhere else. So. You can see behind him is uh, a nice little view of his store. You can see he has everything there, catalog. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it's a it's a background yeah. where I'm in my wife's office. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought people might like to, to, to see, you know, uh, the, the comic shop we're talking about, get a little more, you know, ambiance here. Definitely. Yeah, it's great. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, you know, we brought Mike originally. We were just kind of going to go into Mike's story from the beginning of where it started and how he got to where he is and dealing with COVID. But we have a huge news topic that just dropped yesterday. Um, while I was kind of texting Mike and Rob with logistics yeah. on today, uh, DC has absolutely cut ties with Diamond Distributors uh, for the past what couple decades. They've been just exclusively yep. with Diamond. Yeah. Uh, since COVID hit, DC wanted to come back a little quicker. Uh, so they started using different distributors that Diamond obviously was not ready to come back yet. Um, and now they've cut ties completely, which mm -hmm. Mike has already said, hey, this is really bad for a lot of comic stores. So, Mike, take it away. Yes, like, please. What's going on with DC? Why is this happening? And, and how will this affect your local comic shop and, and in the sure. long run and yeah. in the short run? Yeah. Um, you know, just, just to clarify, I think... I'm not alone. The vast majority of voices in the industry, whether they're working on the publishing side, um, whether they've worked in distribution before, um, or in a lot of cases like mine are fellow retailers. Um, I'm not going to say it's unanimous, but the vast majority of people who are in the industry are not just shocked by this move um, and, and not shocked in a way that it was completely unexpected, but shocked in the timing of it and also just like what it could mean partly because of the timing for the direct market. When I, when I say direct market, I, you know, I, I don't know how much you get in the business side of things, but the direct market being, you know, the, the retailer, the store, the person that is getting the book to you, okay. um, not distributors, not the, you know, internet, whether it's through piracy or comicsology or something else, but that's the direct market. And there's, there's been a lot written in the past that, you know, comics or serialized art can exist without the direct market, but the hobby as we know, it just can't. Yeah. yeah. That, that if it really was worth it for a big box store, whether it's Barnes and Noble or Walmart or someone to get into weekly books, they just would have done that already. Mm -hmm. It's just not exactly. quote unquote worth it. So you, you have to have people like me who are doing it in many ways for love of the game. Um, so almost everyone that you're, you're, you're seeing from the industry speak out about this. They're, they're very concerned. A lot of people who are, quote unquote for this move I, I don't think they're misguided I, I think there's just a bit of a lack of information out there and yeah. there's also just because Diamond has been the big distributor for comics for so long they obviously take all of the flack and mm -hmm. people only heard excuses and, and bad news out of Diamond and there, it's really easy for a retailer if your book isn't there and I've done it myself to blame Diamond right but if it wasn't Diamond, it would be some other distributor. the face of it, right? Like, it's, yeah, exactly. It's easy to blame them when they're the middleman between the local comic book stores and yeah. DC or Marvel. 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, now, now, how does that affect the? So, like, obviously, we've been, you know, at, well, not obviously, but if you don't know, we've been kind of DC's been using two separate distributors: a West Coast one and an East Coast one. Right. Uh, on our side, it goes through Midtown Comics. Yes. So, uh, U- UCS Distributors, which within 24 hours of being announced officially, was outed as actually being Midtown Comics. Wow. Uh, oh. Which, which is like, it's so sketchy, right? Because you're yeah. just like, if you you kind of think you're pulling something off, otherwise, just say, look, we've partnered with these mail order stores like Midtown and DCBS yeah. because we think that they're a good stopgap which is how this was sold initially that they're a stopgap until diamond is up and running yeah um but it, it's not it, it's a completely different business model and people kind of I, I think and again myself included i'm not some sort of profit you know when this started i was very negative about it mm-hmm. but i also was like you know what it does make more sense than starting a business completely from scratch to distribute mm-hmm. and it does make more sense than the original sort of big rumor was that Penguin Random House is going to try to create a new distribution hub themselves oh, wow. or potentially just buy out Diamond. But I keep going back to this. As great as a hobby as it is, weekly periodicals are not incredibly profitable. Yeah. So because of that, storefronts and by definition, the distributors to those storefronts operate on very tight margins. Don't they view selling a comic like a single issue the same as selling a T-shirt? And their profits and everything. So uh, um, a single a single comic is so it, it's tough, right? Because if you just want to say like cost, then uh, a shop of, of my size, which I think is like relatively indicative of the average comic shop, right? Yeah. Um, by, by which I mean, if there's two thousand comics out, two thousand comic stores in the United States, probably fifteen hundred of them are roughly the size of, of my shop. There are shops that are bigger. There are shops that are smaller, right? But the vast majority that have been successful, have existed, have continued to exist are are roughly this size. Stores of that size, um, you're going to get a discount of about 50%, right? So like, yeah, I I might make $2 on a $4 book, but there's rent, there's man hours, there's just software licensing that's involved in running a shop. There's all sorts of expenses, right? Any type of overhead that you would expect, plus some specific to the comic book industry. So in terms of is selling a comic the same uh, profit margin um, as, as a shirt, you know, probably not. It's, it's, it's a, it's all said and done. If I sell a $4 book, I, I mean, like I would just be estimating that I'm making less than a dollar on that book. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now for a distributor like diamond, they're making even less. Now, right? when it comes um, to these new aspects and these new yeah. distributors coming in and basically taking all the DC, um, the business, how does that, one affect your pricing whether it's shipping sure um how does it affect dates because we know um you know for the past couple of weeks they've been coming out on tuesdays right even though Strange. diamond is still shipping and and continuing you know marvel image all the indies coming out on wednesdays uh-huh. um how does that affect your your day-to-day or your weekly operations as well as man sure. I'm, I, I'm just instead of getting one distributor all at once and, and the boxes right. are delivered and i could go through it i'm now have to wait and go through here and then i have to go through here yeah so what you're talking about is sort of what I was referencing earlier, where there there's just sort of added costs, whether it's labor or, um, you know, the hours I have to put in just thinking about stuff or just someone having to be in a particular place for an order, much less processing it. Um, but yeah, DC's explanation was that they wanted uh, all of their products to be releasing at the same time. So okay. previously, there had been an understanding that digital product would release roughly a day. Sometimes it's like 12 hours, depending on where you live in the world. Um, after print product, there was an expectation that if you're making a graphic novel, that's out of weekly periodicals that are put out by the shops, mm-hmm. the shops are helping you make that money, right? Like nobody really wants DC distributing directly to people by some sort of mail order service. Yeah. Like, and the times that Marvel or DC or other companies have tried to offer that, it generally hasn't been very successful. But what DC wants to do now is is say, look, we we had a tacit understanding with retailers that you help us sell these books. So when they're collected together as like the Batman trade paperback or hardcover, Mm -hmm. that we're going to give you some exclusivity for like a week against like a Barnes and Noble or an Amazon. They've been chipping away at that very slowly. And part of this effort is sort of that final, final nail in the coffin where they're saying, 
we want to release all of our product across all mediums, across all platforms on the same day every week. And that's going to be Tuesday. So what that means is that the places that are selling the most single units of this stuff mm-hmm. are not getting any bit of benefit from that aside from like, I'm going to make 78 cents when I sell a Batman comic, right? Now it doesn't make much sense for me to stock Batman trades because I know that Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all these places are going to be getting them probably earlier than I am. And they're going to be getting them much cheaper than I am, which again, I understand as a smaller shop, which is the average size shop, but I'm saying like compared to something like a Barnes and Noble, compared to something like a Midtown Comics, Mm -hmm. that I'm not going to get as good of a discount. That's what you would expect from Diamond. As a large buyer, they're the ones who'd be buying from DC and then selling to us and passing that discount along. So for now, DC has said they're going to, or UCS um, and Lunar, which is the other distributor for the West Coast, that Mm -hmm. they are going to maintain our same discount levels but they're not maintaining the same terms, which is incredibly important because a lot of stores, not all of them, but a lot of stores, um, they're playing a bit of a shell game. And almost all businesses do this. This is why what do you mean um, by when that? COVID hit, so many businesses were immediately declaring bankruptcy or asking for loans yeah. because you're taking product in and you're paying a week later or 30 days later or 90 days later. You're paying that back with the profits you sold uh, the the problems ah, from the stuff you sold, okay, okay. right? So if you're a business that is depending on terms and now suddenly, like the definition of suddenly, right? Yeah, like this happened yeah. Friday afternoon and nobody knew it was coming except people who worked at DC. Yeah. Um, even Lunar didn't really have that much advance notice, I think. And they were just like, hey, um, you need to get a new dis- distributor, which means a bunch of paperwork and legal stuff. Mm-hmm. You need to familiarize yourself with their website and their procedures. Uh, but also, even though they're giving, if I have a 50% discount or some other store has a 45% discount level, they're maintaining that. But if you had 90 day terms, you're starting from scratch, which means you're either paying up front or you might, if you're a, a big account, they might extend to you, you know, seven day terms. But it's pretty unlikely because one of the major motivations of this from DC is because Diamond said, hey, we're shutting down. For the health of the industry, stores all over the country are shutting down or they should be shutting down soon. Our warehouses aren't safe. We have to make sure that when people come back to work, they're not just getting COVID and immediately spreading it and getting everyone sick. And we'd have to shut down anyway. To me, this guy feels like um, DC is being spiteful. Like they're like, you know, I view that what Diamond did was the right thing, right? They had to shut down for the health of everybody. And they did the two other distributors, Lunar, and then the one you mentioned before as to try to get a jump start to get more money. And now they're like, you know what? We're just dropping them completely. It just feels more of a spiteful move than a business move because yeah, theoretically so they could have done this whenever they wanted, right? Um, not really be, because they, they had an exclusive contract with Diamond as, as many publishers, not all, but many publishers have an exclusive contract to distribute to the direct market, um, like comic shops directly, right? Uh, through Diamond. So two things really factor into why this is happening now and to this degree. The first is that uh, roughly two years ago, AT&T purchased Time Warner, Mm -hmm. which owns, uh, of course, DC. And they purchased that for about $85 billion. They not only purchased, though, the, the, the entity of Time Warner and everything that they owned, they also assumed the debt that Time Warner had. Yep. And we're talking oh, okay. debts in the tens of billions of dollars, right? So this is also why you're seeing a Snyder Cut, because instead yep. of releasing a new movie that's going to cost you $200 million to make and a mm-hmm. whole bunch of time and effort, especially when COVID's going on, you can authorize $20 million in reshoots, much of it possible through CGI, yeah, and then sell people at $20 a pop to buy this thing. I'd rather so this I want to see all the financially stuff. driven because they need to finance that debt. Yeah. Now, in that. terms of the other main reason it's happening now, um, if, if anyone follows any major sports league, you may have heard the term force majeure. Yep. And that's just a fancy way of, yeah, of, I have no idea what that is <laughs> of saying like an act of God, okay. right? That you can have a contract in place, 
But if what is determined as sort of like a once in a lifetime event or a natural disaster happens and either party is not able to meet their obligation, the contract is null and void. Oh, okay. So the reason DC had to do this and that's at such a tight window is because Diamond was resuming normal operations, mm. right? And yep. so once they're resuming normal operations and once especially the larger stores on the coasts opened, DC couldn't use that clause anymore. Okay. Now, a lot of this is, is people who, who are probably closer to this or have industry contacts. I've just done a lot of sort of reading and following Twitter and stuff about it. I don't know this personally, but just if, if you want someone in the industry to explain it, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's, that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's not great to, to get back to Chris's earlier question of why a lot of people are worried about this. There's a couple tiers. The first is even though DC had been relatively stagnant in sales, other publisher sales were not stagnant. So another reason that Time Warner or AT&T, whoever sort of authorized this, wanted this to happen is because they were saying, look, we, we checked out the direct market and sales have been stagnant for years. And I can tell you my shop is pretty reflective of other shops, I, I think, and the, the national trends and the global trends. Okay. And, and that is DC sales have been stagnant. Mm. Marvel has shown growth. Image has shown growth. Boom has shown incredible growth. And I imagine looking at that as someone at you know Time Warner or AT&T and seeing this asset you have not performing, you probably want to shake things up. Now, is that also you, why we got yeah. that like "quote unquote" rumor from Time Warner and DC that if their their next oh the forties event was uh, was supposed to be like Generation Zero, which obviously is major. Yeah, yeah, moment, uh, that's like if that's that was possible. Work, DC was going to be shut down completely, right? So, so nobody knows like if that was people like Didio pushing like, "Hey, give us a chance to reboot it. If you want dollars, we we, yeah. we can we can do that." Um, and then, of course, I don't think it's an accident that he was pushed out fairly recently. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's an accident that this whole big line in like Black Label was launched and then almost immediately was just like, oh, we're getting all this press and people are making fun of, you know, the Battle Wang. <laughs> the Battle Wang. No Battle-wang. Black Label books can come out. Yeah. Everything goes back to the drawing table. Mm-hmm. All art pages have to be approved by corporate. And that's why you saw a months long delay between the first black label stuff. And now when it's seeming yeah. like they're flooding the market yeah. and everything is Joker, Harley, Batman. Everything. Yep. And that's yeah. because I think, again, there is a strong financial incentive, not from DC editorial, mm-hmm. but from AT&T to make money to finance this debt. Well, what um, it, like I, so I understand like, you know, it's all Batman, Joker and Harley, but like, and DC sales are stagnant, but like, the core of DC books that are still doing well and still like arguably high on the charts, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, would be those things. Isn't it like, I would view it like, all right, I think we need to up this scale of the other books of the other world instead of just focusing on Batman to get better numbers. Cause you can't keep relying on one book or, you know, one family of books to carry all the weight. Right. Yeah. So this is, this is where the idea of like growing the base comes in Yeah. where, you you don't have a healthy comics community in general whether forget about stores but just generally if you're you're so closed off right because if you're reading dc you're basically reading batman maybe a few other books mm-hmm. and if you're not reading batman then it's hard for you to talk to other dc fans because there's not a really great second tier of books yeah. and i don't think it's an accident that the second tier right now is but really like justice league because yeah. that's Snyder's fans kind of carrying over and Batman's yeah. also in that book. But if you look at sort of the sales tiering, there's in terms of the, just their comic books, not graphic novels. Okay. It's a lot of Batman, Joker, Harley related stuff. You might say justice league. And then everyone would be shocked at sort of how comparatively poorly books like green lantern or flash are doing, yeah. you know, these characters that people love mm-hmm. and a lot of stores, mine included just aren't going to have 10 copies for the rack you know, expecting 10 people to walk in and want to pick up, you know, Flash 753 because mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. They're going to come in and they're going to see eight different Batman, Joker, Harley choices. And they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to grab this thing. Right. Yeah. If you have one big Batman book, then, you know, you can sort of let other titles rise up to see what is that second tier and and then get, you know, to do. A, I, I think DC has sort of cannibalized their base a little bit rather than growing it by doing too much Batman 
uh, and Har- Harley Joker. Yeah, stuff. they're doubling down on what has brought them success, right? They're like, oh, if I have yeah. five different Batman books, that means we're selling five books instead of just the one Batman book and allowing the base to grow. Right, right. But it, see, what, what happens instead in a lot of cases, and this is something that Marvel had to deal with as well, and I think they're they're slowly getting a handle on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to Marvel's credit, as, as coming out of COVID, they canceled a bunch of books. Many publishers have. A lot that's, of books. That's good for shops. For years, retailers have been saying, give us fewer books mm-hmm. with more known creative teams, like spend more time on the editorial process. Even if a book is a week or two late, spend more time making quality product and less of it because that way we don't have to take 15 chances a week on books that might not sell. We're taking five on a better product. So it's less of a risk that we're taking as well. Right. And then we know where to put our dollars. Mm-hmm. And um, but before I get too far afield though, Chris, you, you asked about sort of uh, why why this is so dangerous to shops or sort of what the financial impacts are. Yeah. To get back to it, even though from DC's perspective, they've been like stagnant and at and is concerned about that, obviously. Mm-hmm. Whether they've been stagnant or not, they're still in the high 20s, low 30s of units that Diamond normally sells. Yeah. Mm. So it was 48 hours ago as we're recording this that Diamond found out once and for all, like, hey, we're losing that. Yeah. Wow. Right. For any business, that would be devastating. For a yep. business coming out of COVID that is also reliant on so many small businesses that are coming out of COVID, some of which the way things are going in some states are going to be shut down again. Yeah. That could be crippling. Which right. The second time would economically be so much worse, too. Right. Because after um, opening back up, yeah. the, the economy breathes a little. But if you go back, People are less likely yeah. to yes. one believe yeah. in that process and two spend that money all over again. Right. Really. If they were the hurt issue, once before, they're not going to make the same mistake exactly. again. The issue is trust from the consumer. It's whether whether a store wants to open or not is almost irrelevant. It's it's whether people will come to that store. Yeah. Right. And you know, for the past several months, I've been doing a lot more delivery. We've been able to start curbside. Um, I've been doing a lot more shipping. Mm-hmm. But again, remember if if. Any business that relies a majority on new comic sales, that's not their business model. You can't make money selling selling books and shipping and spending the man hours, in some yep. cases, to ship two comics. I'm making a dollar fifty. No. Right? Yeah, it's like, just not enough. Like for most people, not just me, it's worth more than than your time to get these two books, to bag and board them, to pack them up, right? To print all that stuff out, to get it to the post office. Cause that's another thing too, is like the yep. post office was just yeah. Not even open. It was hard to ship stuff for a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I think that is a big concern, Diamond's solvency. Mm-hmm. And the other big concern from retailers is that, look, we have systems set up to receive comics. We have procedures set up to receive comics every week. We have an expectation of combined shipping. That is one of the massive benefits of having one distributor. Anyone who's ever shipped anything before knows that, you know, combined shipping is it just saves you a bunch of money. A lot of money. Right? Yep. Or if you buy stuff, combined shipping, or getting to a free shipping tier or, or a yeah. cheaper freight shipping tier saves you a bunch of money. And again, I'm going to keep going back to it, but if you're making 78 cents, 75 cents on a book, yeah. you need that combined shipping. Yeah. Right. Like I'm some weeks paying of pounds and stuff coming to your shop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm in some cases paying, um, you know, a couple hundred dollars just to ship these books. Wow. Right. And when you think about that, how many books then do I, I have to sell, you know, like 250, 300 comics to pay for the shipping for the rest of the books. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, that's rough. DC is saying, surprise, overnight, you have to get a new account and get the shipping from someplace else. And I'll tell you, one of the first things that at least UCS distributors faced was everyone saying, your shipping costs are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm shipping in COVID and it doesn't cost me this much. How are you possibly shipping this much stuff through, you know, a big deal with UPS and you are shipping at a more expensive rate, right? And you want us to believe that you're you're not profiting from this. And they're just like, oh, yeah, we're going to negotiate a lower shipping rate. Happened within one week because everyone was like, this is nuts. This is unfair. This is not how you do business. And, you know, there were a lot of articles at first about uh, this was in Lunar, Lunar's case, less not so for UCS, that they were using bubble wrap, right? And then yeah. this was so much better than what Diamond was doing. I can tell you that um, Diamond generally doesn't use bubble wrap, but the next week they were using bubble wrap 
and that wow. all this COVID stuff that was happening before that they had just invested millions of dollars into their main distribution hub to make it more efficient to process reorders, not in two weeks, but reorders in three days and damage replacements in three days oh, wow. yeah. um, to, uh, to get boxes that don't, it's kind of hard without a box here to show you, but the bottom of the boxes, when they fold in and you tape them, mm-hmm. even if you use good packing tape, when it's full packed full of 200 comics, any sort of big impact is going to burst the whole thing apart, right? Yeah. Because it just, it's got so much weight pressuring it on all sides. Yeah. So Diamond went out and made a new box that was on the bottom. It was unibody. Wow. So there was, there was no, nowhere to cut on the bottom. There was nowhere to tape on the bottom. It was one solid piece of cardboard around. Okay. And it was only at the top that you folded and taped. Hmm. And since that point in time, I would say our damages have probably gone down about 75%. Wow. That's awesome. And the reason I bring up these boxes is because damages waste a bunch of time. Yeah. When Chris comes in on Wednesday and he wants a comic and I got to say, hey, they came in damaged. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It used to be we're going to get them in a week or two. Mm-hmm. Now it's we'll get them by Friday, which is a huge improvement yep. at no additional cost. It's Definitely. just regular shipping. We don't mm-hmm. have to pay for two-day shipping, which we used to have to do if we wanted replacements in the same wow. week. And, but the damages have gone down dramatically. I tell all of this because UCS, without this experience, they started using the flimsy Midtown boxes. And within two weeks, they were using the old, um, the old type of boxes that Diamond used that okay. sucked. And they stopped using bubble wrap. Mm-hmm. Like so many things that they're just like, ha, ah, we just got good press. And now it's like, you know, screw yeah. you guys. They're behind the and, curve. Yeah. But yeah. Do you think some of that is just like, hey, new company, like, even though they're like, hey, we got this huge account, right, they're right, still right. a new company, like, not even in the trenches of like, yeah, right. you've got an account, but this is the standard. Uh, not, not at all, precisely because one of the things that retailers complain about all the time is that when there's like um, that, that Midtown DCBS, these big sort of large mail order stores, mm-hmm. that they're obviously getting a bunch of books. They're getting them from Diamond. Yeah. So they know all the good and bad of diamonds like previous shipping methods. Yeah. Right. So there's, if, if you have the benefit and you're trying to sell like, Hey, we're using these companies because of their experience, then you, you can't then come around and say, well, they're inexperienced at this, the mm-hmm. thing they're literally experienced at. Yeah. Right. That's fair. Um, additionally, I would, I would say like the, the big concern from stores in using these companies is one, um, a lot of people don't understand they are my biggest competition. My biggest competition is not a comic book shop in the next town over. Mm-hmm. My biggest competition is someone who wants a book for $2.80 instead of $4. Um, even if they're paying some shipping, even if sometimes they get damaged from Midtown yeah. and they don't care about going to a local shop, right? Yeah. But Midtown is getting these massive volume discounts. So they're basically able to give away these books because they're making money off of the incentive variance okay. that like, I can't get a one in 200 incentive variant in a lot of cases where you have to order 200 copies of something to get this copy. And there's massive profit in that incentive, uh, right? Midtown is going to get them on every single book. Yep. Cause they just and have, they so have many the exclusives accounts. too. And then right. Midtown has their exclusive variants yeah. through artists that people are going to go online and buy at a discount. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's a big driver as well. Yep. But one of the things that could really easily like, even the playing field, and I tweeted about this, was like if Marvel and other companies committed to not doing variants above one in 50 and start yeah. doing more variants that are one per store if you just order a certain threshold based on your previous orders. Because mm-hmm. what that does is it lets every store get a chance at a cool variant and it doesn't give the Midtowns an extra benefit, especially when they are a part of something that I think a lot of people fear is going to hurt the industry overall. Um, and so... I, I say they're they're like our competitor, and why why and how would you ask like a a bookstore? Why would you ask a bookstore to say you now can't get your books through a book distributor? You have to get them from Amazon. Not only does that make Amazon more money, make Amazon yep. stronger, right? Yep. But more importantly, a thing a lot of people don't think about is it provides Amazon all of your ordering information. Right. So now with Midtown that they surely know their competition is not with DCBS. 
their competition is not with other mail order stores or eBay. Their competition is with the local comic shop. If yeah, all the local comic enough. shops went away or just 10% of them went away, some people would quit comics for good. But yeah. everybody else who doesn't want to drive another town over or two towns over, they're going to get their books online. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Now, yep. if Midtown looks around this greater Hudson area and they have the sales data of every single zip code, wow. they can then know where they should target their advertising and in yeah. an extreme case, where they should open other stores. Yeah. Right? So and expand the, outside of New York City too. Yeah. The more work you're doing by selling DC books, the more data you're giving your biggest competitor to put you out of business, both through mail order and also in some cases through physical expansion. So let me ask this question with regards to DC changing. Do you see stores or even in your case, your store uh, going to sell less books? Like, do you feel like, all right, because they've done this, I'm not going to push DC books as much. I'm going to focus more on Marvel. Do you think that's going to come into play at all? Do you think stores are going to even boycott DC? I know this is like the real extreme, but I just wanted to get your take on that. Yeah, I, I think there are some stores who view this as like a declaration of war, quote unquote, and, and do want to boycott DC. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, your your initial reaction is sort of just like WTF, you know, like, yeah. why why are you doing this? And you like, kinda what are you it. doing? <laughs> yeah, it's like, this isn't good in the long term or the short term for anyone. Yeah. But I, I will say this, like, I, I got into comics, I stayed in comics not for the money. I have to make enough. Like this has to be able to be my full-time job or what's yeah. the point, right? And yeah. again, if I'm paying $200 in shipping just from Diamond, that's not going down that much even though 25, 30% of that volume is gone just because you got to pay UPS a certain amount, right? Yeah. And then now I'm having to pay a separate UPS fee shipping amount to get those comics from DC. So to answer your question, Rob, what that immediately means is if my shipping from a separate order uh, from DC every week, and that doesn't, that doesn't even get into the fact that we are supposed to use Penguin Random House as a third distributor for graphic novels. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the money that's going towards shipping, which does not go at all towards better service, does not go at all towards taking chances on books, any of that stuff, that is coming out of my pocket. And what that means is when there's a hot new indie book or there's a new number one from Marvel or, uh, you know, whatever it is, or I want to add something to the store, I have less money to do that. So what does that mean? Like, I I don't think you can boycott DC because if if you're if you're doing this for the right reasons, you want to get books into people's hands. You You want to have a healthy community. DC and their characters have have been iconic for so long. People aren't quitting DC. All they're going to do is blame the shop owner. Right. Okay. And this is yeah, in, in, in particular a bad position that DC has put us into. Mm-hmm. You already see people sort of blaming Diamond and you're just like, what was Diamond supposed to do? DC yeah, they don't like, want what, a contract. Yeah. What are they supposed yeah. to do? <laughs> right? If if the if the rationale of like we, we did this to save lives, like places have been shutting down all over the country, doesn't work. We're releasing fewer comics because if we release them all at once, we will bury stores. We will yes. just bury them. Yeah. Right. And if that doesn't work here. There is no way it's going to work when Chris comes in and I'm like, hey, I'll order whatever you want except for DC. Yeah. Now, sure. what that does mean is a lot of stores are not going to be taking chances on DC titles. They're going to be racking fewer DC titles mm-hmm. because I can tell you this, right? One of the best ways to get me to sell a book or to take a chance on any number one from a distributor or a publisher mm-hmm. is to be like, hey, instead of $2 and change, this book is going to cost you $1. Oh, right. That's, yeah. that's awesome. That would be great. Yeah. Yep. Now think about it in reverse, right? It's just common sense. Mm-hmm. If DC now, because of shipping, right, and and worse terms, is now telling us, hey, we need money up front, and it's going to be more money per book. Mm-hmm. And I only have so much money to spend on new books every week. You're yeah. going to be like, why am I going to buy just uh, Teen Titans or like Flash or uh, Green yeah. Lantern? I'm just going to yeah. get the Batman ones. And because your bottom line doesn't go up with them, right? Up as well. exactly. I'm going to get the best selling stuff to rack. Mm-hmm. Nothing else can see the rack, right? Mm-hmm. On trade paperbacks, I am much more likely to get trades and graphic novels of other companies because I can get combined shipping on that. Yeah. And I get a regular shipping on that. Yeah. Um, I am much more likely to be promoting other books to because if um, you came into my shop, Rob, and you're like, hey, I want to sign up for this new Boom comic, right? Mm-hmm. 
um, that's awesome because I know every month I'm going to be making, you know, 38 cents more on that book that you're getting than on a DC book. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If someone wants to drop a DC title, I'm going to be like, great. I'm going to suggest something different. Yeah. I'm not going to be pushing another related DC book. Yeah. yeah. Because that adds up. Yeah. Right. That's the and, other and thing how that, much. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, just how much does when you're when you're looking into books and, and whether it's DC, Marvel, Image, Boom, whatever, how much, especially with the big two, if you're going to take a chance on a book, how much does creative team on that book matter? Oh, so to, to me personally, it probably matters more than a lot of store owners, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. I should say like the quote unquote second tier of like comic book famous people matter exactly. more to me than a lot of others. And okay. I, I am more likely to take a chance on that stuff. Like if, uh, and this is not to insult him anyway, but if like if, if Colin Bunn's name is on an indie book, mm-hmm. especially if it's horror, I'm much more likely to take a chance on it than mm-hmm. if it's someone I don't know. Yeah, right. that's fair. Um, now, a lot of smaller publishers in particular, they're going to be getting some of these great creative teams as well. And also they may be offering returnability. If you order 10 or more copies, they may be offering a bigger discount on issues one through four. They may be doing social media blasts and geo targeting based on stores that order a certain amount. There's all sorts of things that smaller publishers have become better at doing to promote their book and not just relying on, on people like me to, to pour through previews, to read all these PDF copies, yeah. and advanced copies before we order. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I like, it's it's got a factor right and yeah not all of the dc books have quote unquote like the best creators by definition right yeah. like they're, they're all spread out and look if all of this started because dc and their their new corporate owners um viewed the direct market as stagnant and as i said it's the dc books that were stagnant not everything else not the market then I don't know how this helps me to put more DC books on the racks. Exactly. It, it doesn't make me push the product. So to get in a roundabout way back to, uh, sorry, as my hand ghosted through there, um, <laughs> but in a roundabout way back to Rob's question, I don't think you can boycott DC and I'm not even sure how much it matters in, to the extent of you shouldn't be doing anything to hurt DC. Mm-hmm. Because this begins and ends with the fact that AT&T probably doesn't care yeah. how many comics are sold. That could be it. I right? do know, like, I could imagine That's what I thought for months. <laughs> ahead of Boom or ahead of, like, Image and hearing this news with DC. I'm sure they're jumping for joy. That means that the indie books are going to have a better time to shine. Like you said, like, somebody drops a DC book or DC books aren't selling. Shop owners already are spouting out like hey follow these indie books because they're great they're there's more to comics than just superheroes yeah. this is like oh if you don't want to read batman here like pick up this title from image it's kind of right. like that and like it's a whole new world and like yeah this could like be, from the writer of this comic that you love this exactly. is their other stuff right like it could be a nail by the returns came out this past week by the writer of flash right oh. and he sort of got big because of his indie work and then went on flash and did some other stuff at dc but you know now he's like he's he's returning to this world of, of indie stuff, yeah. and so yeah, like we're we're on every level, you know this is this is a business, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't think people are are doing this just to make friends or anything. Although I, I made some great friends both at the shop and also you know within the industry, mm-hmm. but this is this is a problem on a lot of levels, and yeah. and like one of those additional levels that I don't think a lot of people realize too is. The great benefit of having one distributor, one main distributor, I should say, for periodicals is you can very easily do a data dump into a point of sale system, right? You can be like, okay, this is this massive CSV file, or this is like the invoice we're getting. When we receive, it, it, it just all goes in there, it all gets processed, and it's all one file, mm-hmm. right? It sounds really silly. Because I, I think everyone feels now, if you know anything about computers, you can do just about anything in 10 seconds. Yeah. Well, for stores that are getting hundreds of different SKUs, those barcodes, right, every single week, and those SKUs all have to be in your system mm-hmm. or it doesn't ring up. Mm-hmm. And that all has to happen That's before right. you start checking someone out. Yeah. Yep. Having a single point is much better than having three or five different points where you have to be like, hey, there's something wrong with this file you sent me or, Hey, this isn't downloading for some reason, mm-hmm. or, Hey, could you just include barcodes or like, can you, can you help us out? Can you, can you make this process easier for us? 
And remember, not everyone's using the same software. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, more stores, a lot of stores are using primarily two different softwares that are that are basically set up to to take in Diamond's CSV file very quickly. Okay. But and, and Diamond, every week, to their credit, every single week since I've been open, they're emailing that CSV file the morning after your previous shipment. You're getting and the next yeah. one uh, if you want to scan great. it. Except when you're when it comes to time management now, organization, right? Yeah, it's gonna be. It's more work on the not. It's more work for you, and yeah. and now it's more work and more cost if you're getting separate shipments. Yeah, um, and and, so and again, diamond up, diamond has messed up in the past. Yeah, it like, but you're you're introducing more points of failure into a system. Yeah, right, and that's never good <laughs> it's just like like anyone who's just like built a house of cards right like you want as many good stable points as possible and as few weak points as possible we're not introducing more weak points even if they don't currently look weak which they do mm -hmm. but if they don't you're just like okay there's only more potential for failure here and for yeah. those who are like well diamond was a monopoly okay dc is a monopoly True. DC has a monopoly on their characters now. Exactly. It, it was the case that you could have a choice between where you got your DC books from. Now you don't. So I, I just don't buy that monopoly argument. And we're we're losing all the benefits of one major distributor and we're getting all of the downside. Right. Like, well the whole uh, monopoly argument, I think it comes from people like I've made that argument before. And the main reason I made that argument, I didn't have the knowledge base, right? I didn't know the stuff that you did. Or the stuff that I know now, right? I'm like, oh, they just own everything. So I can see maybe the the less informed uh, individual, like, oh, Diamond just has a monopoly, and now they don't. This is healthy competition. Right. When in reality, the more you research, the more you learn that, like, oh, that was a good thing that we had, and now we're in the wild, wild west of comics. Yeah, this this is tough. And everyone who's been around, you know, like, I was I was a kid when this was first happening, but when, when Marvel tried to you know, buy a small distributor and do things on their own because they wanted to make more money. And part of that was they had debt to finance mm -hmm. that, you know, they, they, they bought Heroes World and made a small distributor and that didn't work out and they had to go crawling back to Diamond. That's also why it, for a long time, Fox owned the rights to all these characters because they just had to sell off everything they that wasn't bolted property. down. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, look, we had to sell a whole company or we need a little bit of money here to finance this debt. And so they had to sell these, these TV and movie rights. Um, you know, that before AT&T came swooping in, there was great concern about Time Warner and Warner Brothers, right? It was it was just like their movies aren't making enough money and they are over leveraged. Mm -hmm. And then that went away because a bigger company ate them up, but they took on that debt. And yeah. so now everyone who's been through that, who's older than I am, you know, and has spent more time in this game than I have, obviously, they're all just like, this is this is insane. Like anyone who's lived through this knows this isn't going to work out. Right, like so. You brought and, up. Um, Good. Oh, sorry to cut you off. No, you, you can finish. Go ahead, finish. Oh, I, I, I just haven't mentioned like because we've never been in this situation. I've always been very proud that that we, we pay our bills on time. Um, no one's ever had to give me a call, be like, "Hey, where's the money? Where's the check? Where's mm -hmm. whatever?" Right. But even like a Mile High Comics, for instance, Chuck Rosansky, the owner there, uh, mm -hmm. wrote about this in Bleeding Cool, or he wrote about it and was picked up by Bleeding Cool, I should say. Okay. Uh, that you know, for a while they had millions in debt. And that Diamond, in particular, basically gave them time when they owed Diamond specifically a million dollars. Wow. Right? For a comic book shop, however big, to owe somebody a million dollars. And for Diamond to just be like, you know what? You've been with us for this long. We'll, we'll float you. We're going to keep getting, getting you your books. You're going to pay us, right, eventually. Yeah. And, yeah. and they, they did. Like, that, that, that bill was paid recently. That's awesome. And you hear about that. And a lot of small and mid-sized shops, that is another big concern is that especially coming out of COVID and with the potential for a second wave in October or November, mm -hmm. stores are very concerned that Diamond won't be able to float them a month, right? Or float them six months or whatever it is. Or say like, hey, I know you're on 30-day terms. You can have 90-day terms for the next six months until you get back on your feet, wow. right? We know UCS isn't doing that. They've already shown that. Now, if Diamond can't because they're 25%, 30%, you know. Smaller. Yeah, they, they just don't have that volume of stuff. Yeah. Then there's a problem. Now, you know, they could do the same thing and be promoting other books as well and other publishers as well, right? And so we'll, we'll just we'll just see. Like everyone has to, has to adapt to this new reality. And I think a lot of us are hopeful that 
something happens in the way of what happened to Marvel, you know, in, in the nineties where DC realizes and, and, you know, it's, it's different when you have two other corporate levels ahead of you or on top of you. Yeah. But that time Warner and at t realize, Hey, this isn't like what we thought. We should just go back to diamonds and it'll be fine. It'll just be better.